Hey everybody, it's Devin Francis, also known as Dr. Blackard. And me. I don't really have much to say about these two episodes. Probably be shorter than the previous episode was. Um, Probably. And uh, this is the Adventures in Aussie Oddcast, episode 199. What are we talking about today? Uh, I just realized that the season 7 finale, or 70 finale is going to be episode 200. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. Uh-huh. Um, we're going to be talking about, uh, titles, uh, Badge of Honor or something Badges like that. Badges of Honor, yep. And, did I delete it? I might have deleted it after listening to it. Uh, A simple reminder. Oh, okay, no, I didn't delete it after listening to it. It's just the title didn't associate in your mind it's not with... called fake veggie yeah. tales kids radio it... sermon. okay i'm not the only one i was listening to this i was like this is just veggie tales but audio only no victoria uh surprisingly you didn't make up the fact that mm-hmm. rob the potato and jerry the cute or jerry the carrot were veggie tales parodies Bro, I was playing BBS while listening to this episode, so I did not have the strongest attention span. Uh, and then I listened to Critical Role right after, and I was like, oh, this is so much better, because I did not like these two episodes. Um, so, uh, first, episode 893, Badges of Honor, written by Kathy Buchanan, what happens in our first episode today? The July so, episode, no. No, it wouldn't the, be July. No, I think it was. I think like uh, da, 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 cars August. Cars and whatever was July. Um, the August episode, the AOC. So in this one, um, the two Marcy's are mentioned, which this is the second time they've been mentioned, I think, mm-hmm. like after the camp yep. stuff. Um, and... They are in a scout troop or whatever with Zoe and Olivia. And they keep on getting like all the badges. They're it's very Heathersy energy. I like how you take the them. oblique product placement when we get one in an episode and you're like they're in a scout troop or whatever and just <laughs> gloss over. I appreciate that about you. What? <laughs> no, I like it. I like it when the show is like you can they're saying the name over and over and it's very clear like we are saying the name of a real group and it's supposed to absorb into your brain and you're just like it's whatever it's something. Thank you. <laughs> and... Victoria's like I am immune to propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um so they uh the Marcy's are like getting more badges and stuff, and then Zoe and Olivia are like, "This isn't fair. We need more badges than them." So then they try and like binge all these different things um, that will get them badges, like all these different activities. And Buck is also there, and Wit is also there, and uh, very unfortunately for Buck, he gets dragged into this. Because they try to murder his dog this episode. It really... Because Buck's life wasn't sad enough. At one point, they're like, hey, where's Buck right now? And the line is like, he's going to get more water because he's dehydrated from crying. And I was just like, can Buck catch a break, please? It, it really goes downhill very quickly from like, oh, oh. no, we messed up this cake for wit's end to... Oh no, we managed to save Buck's dog's life and only have one of its legs amputated. Oh my gosh. I. Uh, so they do these different tasks. Buck gets involved, and one of them is like make a cake, and then the icing's really bad, and they're like, oh, the Marcy's must have sabotaged us, even though there's no evidence that they like did at the time. And then they go boating with Buck, and they run out of, like, gas in the boat so they can't move. And Buck's like, I did this on purpose so you can learn how to, like, refill the tank. Did you bring the extra gas? And then um, Zoe's like, I was was distracted by by ducks. 
and no she was distracted by swans. swans yeah i and was then, like was it sw- um, i was like i feel like it's swans but i feel like and then, there wouldn't be no, swans no here's the thing so zoe was distracted by swan or something like that and then buck's like well then we'll use the paddles to paddle back olivia did you put the paddles in and she was like i was distracted by some ducks or so pigeons or whatever i didn't and then um they get back somehow it cuts away and then they're like the marcy's must have sabotaged I assume us they just there used their hands. and then uh they're like buck can we walk your dog and honestly at the beginning of this episode i forgot that buck had a dog and i was just like oh right it's nice that we get more content with buck's dog mm-hmm. and by the end of the episode i'm like maybe we shouldn't put buck's dog in another episode because it's just going to hurt Sparky, and I only want the best things for Sparky. And I was very upset in the latter half of this episode because of that fact. Because of that, honestly, simple desire, I I feel. A reasonable, <laughs> and, a reasonable ask. Yes, I, I see a dog, and I see a boy who does not have much that he loves and loves him back. Mm-hmm. And Buck is just like, yes, I love this dog very dearly. He wakes me up every morning by licking my face. And I'm like, that is adorable. And at the end of the episode, Buck's just like pacing the veterinary clinic, sobbing because he thinks his dog is going to die. And But before that, he gets to experience the panic of his dog being lost and then starting to have like a panic attack mid scene, basically. Only to be called up later and being like, hey, your dog was hit by a car and we're going to cut one of its legs off. And he's just like, I love my dog so much by the end of the episode because my dog's not dead. Thanks, guys. <laughs> and, it's just, and then, and then, and then Olivia and Zoe are like, oh, we shouldn't have worried about all those badges a bunch. Um, we should have just worried about taking care of this dog and been better people. And then Wit's like, no, it's cool, because it turns out the Marcy's did sabotage you. And I'm like, no! <laughs> and then the episode ends. And I just, I, I, uh, the, le- the, les- the lesson, the takeaway is... Is that your conspiracy it, theories are true. I just, I would have liked this episode so much more... If the Marcy's hadn't actually done anything and it was just like, hey, be more responsible, be more aware of your surroundings, don't blame people for things just because you don't like them and stuff and be good stewards of like the things you've been entrusted and don't get your friend's dog hit by a car and stuff and don't get them lost. Uh It was, I'll say this, I didn't see it coming. (laughs) Neither did Sparky. Oh no, this is so tragic. Like honestly, this episode, Devin. So oh my gosh. the episode the episode started, and the show was like, "Here's an episode about Zoe and Olivia," and I was like, "Okay." And then it was like, Sparky sleeps in Buck's room, it wakes him up with kisses, and I was like, "You have my attention." Um, Buck was so as good. as as he could have been. I, I felt like mm-hmm. Bob Cratchit there talking about Tiny Tim. He was like as good a saint as he could ever have been in every possible <laughs> turn in this episode. Buck is like, this is my time off to do my fishing. But not only does he give them second chances, he gives them like quadruple chances. He's so good. Buck was very chance. like 70 times seven in this episode. Yes. Like He's like, I, he did not deserve what happened to I'm, him. In any it's way. my day off to go fishing by myself. It's gonna be fun. Eugene's not gonna be there to beat me at the fishing, and I think you were just gonna say beat me, and I was like, Death, no. <laughs> um, and but you guys want to go out on the boat, and I know it's gonna scare all the fish away, but I'm gonna take you, and I'm gonna go above and beyond by trying to teach you a pra- practical lesson by uh, taking almost all the gas out of the motor and then he was trying to pull a, a, a father eugene or auntie connie thing or uncle wit and be like i'm gonna teach you guys a lesson well he was trying stuff. to pull a wit he ended up pulling a eugene or connie where he tries yeah. to do a lesson and <laughs> fails terribly <laughs> um and then yeah. as soon as it like all goes wrong 
like when they're first like, oh, we don't have the gas tank, and he just goes like, <sighs> okay, learning to row is also another important part of boating safety. He just like takes a deep breath and he's like, we're gonna turn this into another lesson. Brock has so much patience in this. I episode. am so proud of him. Could you imagine album fifty three buck in this episode? Like, how would that? <laughs> so, um. Yeah, in the end, things become pretty bad because they lose the dog and Wit drives around and they find the dog and then Sparky gets hit by a car and they're like, he's bleeding very badly. And I was just freaking out. And I was like... Because they were like, they were like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, Sparky got hit by a car. And I was just like, okay, okay, he'll hopefully be okay. And then they were like, look at all the blood. And I was like, no. Wit's like, oh man, if only I had a magic cloth that could heal a dog that's bleeding <laughs> profusely um <laughs> what's like i hate this series sometimes death it's like don't worry we've all stabbed a dog with a sword before guys <laughs> like mr mm. whittaker at least you're not helping. um anyways uh i was like okay clearly they're gonna use the first aid from the beginning and they're like we're gonna need to bandage it tightly enough to stop the bleeding um because Clearly, we were paying a lot of attention in the first scene. You could tell when Zoe went into mm -hmm. shock and died from lack mm -hmm. of blood perfusion. Um, mm -hmm. So they're like, we need to put a tourniquet on the dog. And I was like, okay, first off, I don't know if they're improvising a tourniquet or if they just happen to have a tourniquet on them somehow. Um, but I was like, this feels like an important part for Devin, the occupational first aider, uh, to import, uh, impart an important safety PSA for everyone, um, which is, like I said, I very much did not get the impression that the girls absorbed the first aid training at the start of this episode very well enough to be using a tourniquet, even if it's on a dock. Um, so, kids at home, well, kids never use a tourniquet. Adults, a tourniquet is a life or limb tool. Life or limb. It should only ever be applied to a massive uncontrolled bleed that cannot be staunched by two abdominal pads packed into the wound site. It must only be used when absolutely necessary and with proper technique and recording on it the time of application because it presents a very high risk that you are going to lose the limb that you're attaching it to, so you only use it if it is we are willing to either lose the limb or you're going to die otherwise. Uh, because if it is left on for too long and then it's loosened, it could result in gangrene. Or like I said, at, at the best, there's still a high risk of losing the limb that you are tourniqueting. Yes, Victoria. I'm looking up what a tourniquet is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you use it to... Uh, it's like when people are going to give you a shot or something like yeah. that, and then they wrap it. It's basically a, a traditional arm. tourniquet is just a strap of rubber, and you use it to tie off the limb to prevent all blood flow to that limb. So it's what you use to stop a massive bleed on a limb when there is no other option to do it. Of course, the problem being, as soon as you go past like four minutes of a limb being tourniqueted, the cells are going to start to die and you're increasing risk that they're going to have to amputate the whole limb, which is what ended up happening very realistically. If you put a tourniquet on, there's a decent chance you're going to have to amputate the whole limb and that is why that happened to Sparky. I was just kind of thinking about like um, movies and TV shows and stuff like that where this doesn't happen often enough where a person is brought into a veterinary clinic or brought to a vet mm -hmm. or a dog is brought to a doctor or something like that. Yeah. And they're like, yes, I will do, I will fix this. And it's just like, you are not the proper medical professional for this situation. Like human first aid is so different than animal first aid. And I was just kind of thinking about that. Yeah. During the scene. It's true. Yeah. Um, fortunately when I was redoing my training, um, a couple of months ago, um, OFA two kits now come with combat tourniquets, which are so much faster and more efficient. I mean, it still presents are they the, the same ones with like Velcro because I just yeah, saw some with like Velcro, glasses. and it looks like it has like a pen stuck through it, and you just like twist. Imagine if you had a string around your arm and you stuck a pen through it, and then you just started like twisting the pen 
to like tighten mm -hmm. the thing. So that's like way faster. And then you just wrap the Velcro over it to keep it from like unspinning. Um, so those are way faster at tourniqueting. Um, but once again, it's like in our thing, it always warned us like pretend to tighten the windlass, ca all caps, do not ever tighten the windlass on a real person unless you're intend unless it is a life or limb situation. I played uh, The Walking Dead season one Telltale, and then I think like the episode four at the end of it, the character you're playing as gets bit by a zombie on the arm. Yeah. And then your first choice at the beginning of the last episode is if you want to get your arm cut off or not. Yeah. And I was just like, my character's heartbeat is already pounding so fast. I don't really know if like how fast the blood circulation is going. It might not matter at this point. And I don't want to have to play a video game character with only one arm because that sounds very hard. So everyone was like, hey, you want us to cut your arm off? And I was like, nah, I'll just die. I'll just... <laughs> I'll just get to have full capacity of my arms and then just know I'm going to die at the end of this episode. And then it turned out, like, your choice doesn't matter because the character dies at the same time anyway. And I was like, sweet, no consequences See, but that's a great We're example of life or limb situation. Do I want to lose yeah. my arm? No. But when I faced on the situation of do I lose my arm or I die, yeah, I'm going to lose an arm. I mean... Yeah, I'd choose that, but in this video yeah, game, I, understand. I was just like, I'm pretty sure this character isn't the protagonist in the next season anyway. Same thing as so when, like, yeah, whatever if they die. When Phil Coulson lost his hand, right? It was like, well, my body was going to turn to stone. I don't think I got that far in the show. Yeah, you did. That was in season two. Mac uh, had to cut it off with a season two okay. finale with the axe because it was like, well, my body was going to turn to stone, so... Oh, wait, because he was like writing the... Because he grabbed... He like caught the um the the obelisk from falling and shattering. Okay, I slightly remember that. I guess I don't really remember much about that show other than the it first season. It was Terrigen season. Crystal um, with obelisk fragments in it, I guess. But yeah. Um. Okay. Is there anything else you want to say about this one? Um. Bu 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 so Buck was dehydrated from crying so much, and I'm like, I'm going to die. Kathy, how could you do this to us? <laughs> um, Whit mentioned... They were like, uh, how's Buck? And he was like, oh, he's walking around right now. And I was like, okay, he needs some time to himself. He's getting some I was water. Like, and I was his like, his okay, eyes are good. so red-rimmed from crying. Dehydrated. And he was like, yeah, he needs water because he couldn't stop crying, so he's dehydrated. I was like, no! <laughs> um, Whit mentioned that the vet they were at is Dr. Pat, which is uh, Renee's aunt from five years ago, Dr. Patricia Carter. Oh, that's cool. So wait, that was actually five years ago. I thought. Oh, I thought you were like exaggerating. When no, you said and get this: before. that was the third season of the OAC that her episode was in. Man, Renee is old when you think about it. Um. So uh, yeah, we found out that the Marcies did actually do all that, and I was like, I didn't like that. Did you? Like I said, I didn't see it coming, which is not a good or bad thing necessarily. Um. Just because you didn't, yeah, just because you didn't predict I know, something I'm not, doesn't mean it's a good thing. I don't want to make it sound thing. like, wow, that was a surprise, therefore it's good. Um, mm -hmm. I think that there's the obvious desire, because of what we expect the moral of the episode to be, there's the obvious expectation that it was all in their mind, um, because then it means like, oh, everything we did wrong was our own fault because we were too focused on getting the badges and not paying enough attention to what we were doing and we sabotaged ourselves. Um, and then we tried to blame it on someone else. Um, and while I think that does still hold true, like, I mean, they did mess things up for themselves and the Sparky thing was their fault and that was, like, kind of the main thing. Um... I feel like the Marcy thing was only put in there so that it's like, aha, the villains got their comeuppance for being good at stuff. Um, which is odd to me. Even in the web quest where it was going through the, like, um, in talking about creating the episode art, there was a lot of focus put on how the sight lines were designed for it in terms of, like, Zoe and Olivia can only pay attention to like what the Marcy's are doing, but the Marcy's are completely indifferent what to they're doing. There's specific pointing out of like the Marcy sight line needs to not be a Zoe and Olivia because they don't care about what they're doing. They're just trying to do their own thing and treat frostbite. 
Um, and then I was like, but apparently not, because apparently they were paying secret attention to them and trying to sabotage them after all. So I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I think theoretically it doesn't have to undermine the point of the episode because the girls were still getting distracted by things and doing it for the wrong reasons. Um, so which ones are the Mercies? The in the background on the right and dark haired one. Okay. Um, we actually got to. I don't think we've seen what Zoe looks like yet. I could be wrong about that. She's in a bunch of arts. She's okay, she's mind. in like this is. I was thinking her thing. I think this is her seventeenth episode now. So she's about to become like a main character which is funny because i do remember what the first episode yeah. she appeared and you were making we, fun we really tore her apart her first episode and we now she no is mercy. she is properly a main character at this yes. point but uh, we also did that to a lot of other kid characters who have become very have much we? regulars we did that to buddy when he first showed up we also did it to wyatt a little bit i think that's fair, but neither of them have been anywhere near as many episodes as, as Zoe has. That's true, but they were introduced like later. Yeah, later I mean, than Zoe definitely. Was. I mean, certainly Wyatt is in a lot. Wyatt is part of a main family now in Odyssey, pretty much. Yes, and his episode density is a lot higher than Buddy's is. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, Wyatt kind of took Buddy's like. I feel like slot. that's not unfair. And honestly, I'm glad he did. I like Wyatt a lot more than I like Buddy. If I had to like choose yes, between them. Definitely. Um I don't know. I mean it's it's weird that the Marcies were actually doing that because I felt like the episode was, like I said, and in the art they're talking about in the design, they're trying to focus on the fact that like the Marcies aren't trying to compete with you guys. They're not. They're just focused on like getting their badges. They're not trying to make this a competition. You I guys, think are the he only didn't get the memo. <laughs> so I don't know. Just because it's a subversion of tropes doesn't make it a good thing, but also doesn't necessarily explicitly undermine what the plot is supposed to be. So it almost felt. I guess meaningless in the end. Is, yeah, is what and that's it comes why down to. I kind of feel like it could have been left out of the episode. Yeah, I mean, I'll say this: uh, how it impacted the plot or theme, otherwise, it certainly felt out of place in like where it was brought up and the lack of impact that it had on. I mean, anything I guess that happened, especially it could be because like Olivia and Zoe didn't really care when they found out the Marcy's cheated because it wasn't as important to them anymore. That's true. That's a good point. So, um, like, it kind of just shows how they've grown since the first scene in the episode. Yeah, or but the camp episode. That's a good point. I, I will give you that. I didn't really care that much about the Marcy's by the end of the episode in comparison um, to everything else going yeah, on. Yeah, because of Sparky and Which Buck. I guess is the point. But I honestly... I didn't really care in the first scene either, so. Um, but no, that's that's a good point that you raise, because uh, that creates a good like another additional demonstration that even in the face of like oh the Marcies were trying to sabotage us and they're still like that's not what's important right now and we just need to put that aside. Um, what was the thing? That Honestly, I... Buck was the best part of this episode, and he did not deserve what happened to him at all. Yes, Buck sacrificed himself to save this episode. <laughs> um, what was I going to say about the Mercy sabotage? Uh, I don't know. Uh, just because something happens and it's unexpected doesn't mean it's good. No, no, I already said that. Um, I don't remember. What was the charity? Was it the uh, it Girl was, Scouts? It was American Heritage Girls because they okay. said the name in full a whole bunch of times. Um, the <laughs> How was I supposed to know that? <laughs> the footage for the video thing, it was like a bunch of footage from one of their horse camp uh, places. And then Bob is doing some cake decorating in his kitchen. Um, we found out or I found out that Trail Life, which is like Eugene and Buddy and Jay, their their shtick, is like it was born out of the same group 
it was like the boys version that they spun off of American Heritage Girls 19 years after it was created. They talked multiple times about how AHG was created by a bunch of parents who were like sitting around a table and they were like, I'm unhappy with all these existing scouting groups because I don't like the way that they like treat stuff about like faith and culture. So we're going to make our own group with blackjack and hookers. And I was like, eh, I'm not a super fan of that. You know, it's same thing. It was when, like, you know, how like so many homeschooling parents are like, I don't like the magic school, the magic tree house books because they don't talk about Jesus enough. So here's our own version. Wait, Oh, with the Imagination <laughs> Station books? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, that one kid's review. It's like, yeah, yeah. the Imagination, or the Magic Treehouse books never talk about Jesus. It's like, yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, they don't. You're you're right, kid. Good perceptiveness skills. Um, yeah, nat 20 perceptive. Nat 20 perceptive. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's like, we don't like, you know, the Girl Scouts or the Brownies or any of these other groups. So we're making our own thing just because we don't think that we can put people in groups that we have to, in some way, ourselves as parents supplement what we want them to learn. So we need to do our own entire thing instead. I mean, um, I don't think it's the worst thing. It's kind of like sending your kids to... Uh, bible camp or something like that or just like a little church group well, it's like but founding it's, a bible camp because of that well you know what i mean that's what i'm saying i'm not saying like it's, sending. i'm saying when people are like we're creating this group because they're like i have this it's like here are all these great groups out here but i feel like because these aren't explicitly christian and i need that to be in every single part of the thing that my kid does and so i need to create an entire other group because these ones aren't good enough for me because i find myself as a parent unable to like supplement that in their life no like i i do get what you mean and stuff like that it just and it's it's like when that lady was like i'm gonna rewrite harry potter but he's a christian yeah and like the not everything needs to be like that you know martin luther shoemaker um, not little crosses on the shoes and i i don't think it's inherently bad for like i just think certain it's, things to i think it's when people have like christian versions keep of them on, like like a girl scouts troop being like a more christian based one i i don't think like harry potter should be made into a christian book series and that kind of thing but like certain little groups and it's just like hey it'd be cool if we had a christian version of this and the the issue that i take with it is not that like this is the wrong thing to do it's that some people have that philosophy that they need to do that with like everything in life and then what happens is you become exclusionary from no, like I do. intermingling I do that, with yeah. people who are not in your circle in all aspects of your culture it's like oh we're going to homeschool you so we can teach you things our way and we're only going to watch like pure flick pictures oh, pure and flicks. yeah and stuff like that and it's like you become completely separated off in society from like mm -hmm. interacting with i think it's people. one of those it's things a, where it's just like uh you need like a modicum you were a monk uh, <laughs> congratulations you have become monk uh <laughs> you are now from the tv show monk you are now um, what's his face just left my just left my mind the actor's name i don't know i've never watched monk uh, uh you are now what's his face from fraser when i am coach of team <laughs> when i am girl guide of scout <laughs> so uh -huh. um i think i think it's one of those things there's like moderation where um just we're meant to be in the world yeah not of it but still in it you yeah know? just like having an understanding of different things that you aren't familiar with helps you discuss them better with other people who aren't christians and stuff like that if you only talk to christians and you only know about christian things and you never talk to people who aren't christians or talk about like non-christian things if you be a christian and you want to like get on their level that's going to be a lot harder to do you might find yourself unrelatable 
also yes. it's like the literal definition of hiding your light under a bushel so yeah um no no <laughs> so is there anything else you got nope Okay, uh, I'm going to give this episode a, uh, I don't know, 2.5. I don't really feel especially strongly towards it, but I do feel especially sorry for Buck and Sparky. My goodness. What about yeah, you? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it a 3.2 because of Buck and Sparky mm -hmm. emotions and Buck's acting in this episode was phenomenal. He um he showed he did a very good job. Incredible acting. character development. I was saying already at the beginning was like, yeah, I'm gonna sacrifice my free time to help you guys. I'm gonna go out of my way to like also teach you object lessons that are gonna make it more difficult for me to actually do the thing that I wanted to do out here. And then when it all goes wrong and you ruin my whole day off, I'm just gonna take a deep breath and I'm gonna calmly be like, okay, here's what we're gonna do, and not get like upset about it. And then all this stuff happens and he's like so sad and heartbroken but he's like i'm gonna pull through it and i love my puppy because he i've never had a pet before but now i don't know what i'll do if you won't wake me up every morning by licking my face and and also it's like i said before think about like album 53 buck where he just like would interact with just like normal interactions pretty much with like emily and matthew and then the second he left the room he'd just be like Oh, I don't like these people. And now that I'm saying he probably didn't just maybe <laughs> excuse himself for a minute and just like go scream in a closet in this uh -huh. episode, but he has so much more patience. He's like, now. excuse me, and he leans over the side of the boat and sticks his head under the water. <laughs> you just hear scream bubbles. <laughs> and Olivia, and so we're like, he's fine. He's, he's definitely going to scare all the fish away at this rate. <laughs> They would say that. They would. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Mm hmm Oh, poor boy. Buck, Buck has, like, the same... He's developing the same temperament as his dad, basically. Yes. <laughs> Where it's just like, I need to excuse myself to go scream. I will be right back, and then we'll talk more. It's like the Santa Claus. Buck is turning into UG. <laughs> You can be like, sorry, Jules, I gave up the guitar. I'm only playing the ukulele now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, let's talk about the next episode. Okay, yeah, we're going to talk about a simple reminder. So everyone's favorite episode, I'm sure, of this entire AIOC 2020 season episode 894, a simple reminder written by Phil Lawler. You know what this episode did, Devin? It baited me so hard by being like, here's an episode. We have some friends who are going to be in it. Our first character's named Priscilla. And I was so excited. And I was like, they brought my girl back. And then I heard Katie Lee's voice. And I was just like, Katie Lee, I love you. Did you think Priscilla gonna, was going to be in it? I'm just going to cry for the duration of this whole episode. Um... So, uh, one of these episodes is not like the other. One was clearly developed about COVID. So oh, yeah. So, I mentioned, like, a couple episodes ago that they said, like, we have an upcoming episode that is, like, referencing COVID and, like, it's not like, oh, COVID's happening in Odyssey, but it was recorded in a way that is referencing a kind of you know life in the pandemic and it was just like you'll 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 know it's a covid yeah, episode they're like, just like trust us. okay i wonder what that when means. you get and there I start it you'll up, figure it out and it's like and wilson is live streaming bible study on twitch <laughs> and jason is being his chat moderator and wilson's on just chatting category on twitch um, <laughs> and then every commercial break is precipitated by the live stream just suddenly cutting out. Which is weird because this is an OAC episode. That's a good <laughs> Which was my first thought. 
because they were just like, oh, commercial break. And I was like, oh, OAC, what are you doing? I didn't (laughs) think about that. Yeah, I was just thinking, nice try, guys. You almost got me, but I'm not falling for it. What are you doing? I mean, to be fair, I'm sure they write them the same in terms of how they pace out, like, the three-act structure for breaks. Yeah, but the normal episodes aren't, like, well, guys, we'll continue right after these messages. This is, like, the most that they've done since a BTV episode in terms of, like... and it's not an episode that goes on the radio. I absolutely did not think about the fact that this is not in any way an actual broadcast episode. That is very funny. But yeah, they did. That is where they chose to put the beats in to have Wilson constantly losing connections. And I was like, I like how the most pressing references that can be made about quarantine life is just constant live stream issues because it do be like that. Um, But also at the beginning, Wilson's like, this is because I caught that little bug that's going around. I was like, oh, no. (laughs) <laughs> I was listening, I was like, no, Wilson has the sickness. Um, yeah, he's like, so I've decided to quarantine myself to keep everyone safe. Yeah, I was surprised they used the word quarantine. Honestly. Yeah, I was... Um, also, I was surprised Wilson said, I have caught the sickness. And I was like, oh no, Wilson. The use of the word, cor- it was a very pointed word usage to put mm-hmm. quarantine in there, obviously. Um, but yeah, he's like, I caught that little bug going around. I was like, oh no, Wilson. <laughs> Wilson, no. So, yeah, um, we finally got, when we look back in years future, listen to episodes, we'll hear this one, it'll be like, ah, yes. It'll be like, where's COVID? There it is. I do, I think it's funny because I imagine a lot of TV shows aren't going to like explicitly reference it happening when it did, apart from, you know, I know a lot of medical shows and stuff are. But I have thought over the last year, um, podcasts, obviously, just about every podcast you can listen to. It, through this entire span, it is like incessantly mentioned or directly impacting the production of it, no matter what style it is, whether it's like oblique references in something with a narrative lilt, like Good Morning from Hell, or just a general discussionary thing like Mabim Bam. Um, that it's like, if you're listening back in the future, it's like, oh yeah, I love this podcast. It's been going on for 15 years. And there's just a 12-month chunk of episodes where everything is about that time COVID happened. And it's funny because in the moment, it's like, yes, I want people to be talking about this because it's accurate to our lives and it's kind of everything that's going on for everyone right now. But in the future, I think it's going to be very funny if you're listening to the back catalog of a show. It's very jarring. Every show that you listen to with a back catalog will have the COVID era that you go through where it's mentioned someone, or directly the impacting future listening the production. to this and they're like this is very jarring and bad and we're like i'm glad you feel that way it was imagine for us living too. Through. no i mean imagine i'm imagining people who it. were alive through what i'm saying i'm yeah. just saying if they weren't listening to the episodes as they came out they're listening to it in 2025 mm-hmm. and they're like i'm gonna catch up on bim bam and i get through 2020 and i'm like yep i remember this happening or uh saw bones <laughs> i feel like it must be really bad at the beginning of starting like uh-huh. 2020 where they're just like oh yeah it's bad but it won't be bad for much longer and then you're just sitting there and you're like mm-hmm. well I was gonna say if I were to listen you know go back and listen to the last 12 months of Sawbones episodes and I get to the episode in February where Sydney's like everyone's been asking me to talk about this coronavirus and in the end her advice was like unless you have been to China or you have come directly into contact with someone who's been to China and is also sick there is nothing to worry about this should not impact our lives and like most other novel viruses that pop up it should be like gone in no time and not really impact you unless you directly know someone who's affected and from that area and that's then, good to hear I'll, I'll be out <laughs> then I'm gonna go touch some grass <laughs> And then obviously later on, be through the like 80% of the episodes of Sawbones this year that have been about COVID or COVID adjacent topics, um, like the history of medical quarantining, um, for example. If Sydney ever addresses, she's like, obviously, when we first did the episode on this, um, the advice I gave was not correct, um, because normally that is how these situations would go. And it did t- t- turn out that in this case, that's not how uh, that's not how the cookie crumbled. I know my brain just processes information through John Mulaney quotes, mm-hmm. but um, my brain is just thinking like, 
Sydney being like, oh, guys, don't worry. COVID's not going to be a problem. And John Mulaney's like, no, it's not. <laughs> um, I had yet another dream last night where I was like out at a public place and then I realized I don't have my mask and I'm like I don't even there's no way for me to even get out of here to get back home without being seen unmasked and I don't have it on me what am I gonna do and I find I feel it like a superhero I I know lots of people have talked about having like COVID stress dreams and nightmares and the only types of COVID dreams I've had are being like suddenly being somewhere in public and not having a mask and being like, I'm trapped. Now everyone knows my secret identity. Everyone, now all of China knows I'm here. Even if I like, you know, I can like cover myself in some sub adequate way, I will be appropriately harshly judged societally for being out without a mask on, as I should be. Um, anyways, so yeah, they, uh, they just did veggie tales dirty like that mostly is the episode. Um, that concludes all of the notes I have on this episode, by the way, now. I've said all three of Wait, my things. Are, are you actually serious? I said two things serious? about COVID, and I said the line about Veggie Tales. Those are my three notes. Are you actually serious? Yes. I mean, sorry, oh. go through. Tell us what happens in the episode. Okay, usually you don't get through all your notes before I do the summary of the episode. but Usually. Um... So, uh, Wilson is doing, like, a live stream bible study thing i thought and it was a sermon but now that you say it's a bible study that does make more sense why only kids were on it or maybe just because the yeah. adults didn't know how to use whatever platform this was on um so we hear a bunch of names uh that we haven't heard in a long time dion surprised me yeah a lot. i was like they're just throwing names in here now why is dion tuned in this? <laughs> um and uh Jason is basically being like the techno, like the technical support for Wilson. The techno um, moderator. From like a different location because Wilson's stream keeps on having technical difficulties, which is when the commercial breaks happen. I, I feel it made me feel like I was on the Truman Show or something like that. I was like, what are you talking about? There's nothing here. <laughs> <laughs> it just oh my goodness oh i'm my goodness. so glad you realized I, that. I um can i also i just want to point out i was playing um bbs i was playing bbs Bzz. for the last half of the first episode we talked about and the entirety of this episode and the next album 70 episode that we haven't talked about yet the protector and i was basically lost in a labyrinthian maze for in one of my least favorite worlds in the game uh for the entire duration of the next episode mm -hmm. and for half of this episode so i was in a very bad mood while listening to these already which didn't really help with this episode um so uh yeah and also the fact that they priscilla baited me so they had a character named Priscilla. I don't I thought think it'd that's be, what happened. I thought it'd be... I think you Priscilla like, baited yourself. Uh, probably. And then I thought it'd be Priscilla, like, from So Albums you did, ago, you actually thought it was going to be Priscilla. I genuinely thought it'd be Priscilla playing a character named Priscilla, because I'm an idiot and too hopeful for my own good. And ready to be hurt, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I live I, I just live with my arms open full of vulnerability saying come hurt me world <laughs> and then it does <laughs> and then it do so yeah that happened um, so it's a lot like um, BTV Temptations story about the girl with the plant merged with Bethany's fairy tale imaginings from the split episodes except for it's not good. Um, it feels very much like this is just kind of an amalgam of many previous stories that we've had about yeah. there's a farm and the farmer's going away and you have to look after it. And there's a girl and, and there's a garden Lucy and there's like, I'm the CD salesman. 
Uh, yeah, and it was like, and it was all just of these like, things wow, are just like... I, that, the one guy from the Renee episodes, the professor, I didn't catch on to that name until you said it, but this one I feel like I'd be pretty dumb not to notice. I'm glad. I was just oh, like... Good. Oh, good, you did get yeah. Lucifer. <laughs> I was just like, nice try, idiots. Not going to get me on this one. But I was also playing BBS at the same time. So when they were just like, the S-O-N saved me, I was like, oh, <laughs> Done. And then I was like, synthetic. And just Syn- <laughs> it's You know what? It's because I was playing a video game at the time. So was so I, I, Victoria. Wasn't thinking about it. No, shut up. I'm bad at multitasking in that way. You're better at it than me. I was so also I was play like- I was also doing more of a mindless <laughs> grinding kind of thing. But, I I was um I was grinding too, so I don't but, really have a lot. I was yeah, but you said you were lost. Like I mean. This. It, with this kind of story, they're like, if I say any special name, it is clearly an acronym that is very on the nose kind of thing. So as soon yeah. as he started saying it's called, my mind was already like, pay attention to the acronym. He was here, like synthetic inverse nutrients. Yeah. And then I was thinking more about like the words uh-huh. than the letters. I was thinking like inverse because it's like doing all this stuff Backwards. and it's like taking away the good stuff from yeah you and I, stuff. I wasn't Not even thinking paying about attention the fact to that the it words. was an acronym i was just the word sin. taking the first letters and throwing the rest of the words away yeah so i was basically doing the opposite of what you were doing uh-huh. i was doing the intellectual approach i guess well okay. having all intelligence sucked out of my brain <laughs> so you were being invert inverted nutrients i was being internet intellectual Uh uh-huh you're being Um, sorely internet lectually uh near duel i don't know i was one of those people who goes on to a blog and says i'm an intellectual and um As as a fan of rick and morty and the appropriately high iq that it takes to understand these mediums oh um so uh there's this farmer and his daughter priscilla and it's her birthday and then it's her birthday later again i don't know if it was just one very long day or it was a year he said it was a full year that went by okay that's what i thought um because when they were like it's her birthday i was like didn't months go by how has this been a year unless it's been the same day but that doesn't make any sense and i was like okay, i should yeah. stop playing this game while listening after the to this farm and you've been growing and having customers and weeks have gone by and like growing crops and losing but part crops of my brain is also like it's a fairy tale and is time different and it's the same <laughs> day. Did, yeah but i settled on it was a year which it was so. that was Playing... Go me! I did so bad listening to this episode. Play, I, I feel like it. I deserve a zero out of five stars you know, for my attention span. You know, I was gonna say, Victoria. I feel like it's more often the other case in stories when you don't realize. Like, wait a minute, this is the same day. Like, oh man, that's me that watching was... date night. That's me one and a half hours into date night, and I'm just like, it's all been one night. That was <laughs> Alex playing uh final fantasy 7 remake oh, like yeah. a couple chapters ago Big and being for final fantasy they were like why is it always night in midgar and i was like it's the same night and they were like it is the same <laughs> night <laughs> <laughs> yeah there was um one book which i might have mentioned this before um one book where i was so like painfully aware of the passage of time Mm -hmm. which was uh v.e schwab's a darker shade of magic where in the first book um the bulk of it takes place within like i did the math because they mention how many times they sleep or no they they mention how many times it's night and how much time they have left like every now and then and then by the time i got to the end of the book i like mathed it out and i was like okay it's been like ranging from two and a half days to three days and basically neither of them have slept at all and i don't really think they've eaten and like how are they doing and well i mean it's like i feel the ultimate example of that is homestuck where it's like you've gotten several years into the story originally before we left the first 24 hours of the story because of time shenanigans and flashbacks and different perspectives and stuff as the story kept on poking fun at like i mean as it says on the title screen of Homestuck, you have a feeling it's going to be a very long day. Uh, 
So, so. The Priscilla is given uh, like a watering can or whatever with instructions for a formula. I thought it was a so can, like a, like a can of beans kind of can. Oh, yeah, it was. Um, she's given some kind of can. She's a farmer, so I was like, I don't know. I thought it was supposed to be like food. And I was like, was she supposed to figure out you're supposed to give this to plants? I mean, granted, in the end, it turns out the nutrients weren't for the plants. It was for her. So I guess the joke was on me. Um, I don't know. Some kind of container. Um, he did say Which is can. a can. Yeah. Uh, it would be weird was, if it was a watering can if the idea yeah. was for her to eat it. <laughs> um, so basically, she is given this can which has nutrients it abbreviates to sun uh it made when it abbreviated to sun and i was thinking about the mabim bam naming of the year thing the like 20 chase the sun but then like make it s-o-n and we're just gonna be a jesus year (laughs) solar power uh i i really liked chase the sun because it just made me think, just like people just perpetually just going like, Grasp oh, the orb. Not yet. <laughs> like, well, that's a phrase we can't put on any mer- I, any wearable merchandise. I, I must say, no bones about it. And the fact that they decided on that one 50 minutes into the episode was very funny. I did not expect them to I land s- on one that wasn't, that they didn't even say for the first time until the end of the yeah, episode. Yeah, it was very funny. Um, but I... I don't really understand the theme of the year, but it's still, in my opinion, the best that's, one. That's the point, because like they said, yeah. it's the only one that couldn't have gotten ruined at this point by yeah. what has happened. I guess the theme is just like, don't worry about it or whatever. The, it's it's like, whatever big dog you run. want it to be, Victoria. <laughs> big dog run, no bones about it. Akuna Matata. <laughs> it's basically Akuna Matata. Um, Anyways... Priscilla so, is looking after the farm. Priscilla is given instructions to look after the farm, um, sell things, and don't talk to this one salesman who is obviously the devil. And then the guy comes to her and then, like, tries to sell her stuff. And she's just like, be gone. Um, and then uh, he shows the wares and she's like, oh, that's actually really cool. And then people don't want to buy her stuff. She, she was Pixar and... there. She was like, oh, what in, what incredible and innovative 3D motion graphics. I did, how can teach me how to do that? His and then he's tales. like, by the people who brought you Coco <laughs> and Moana. No, because Phil Vischer, right? And Big Ideas, right? Didn't Pixar go to them after they first created VeggieTales and be like, I don't show remember. us show us how you did that with the 3d models and stuff that sounds like a thing that would have happened I don't really remember much about my veg my veggie tales lore <laughs> my veggie tales I went through such a veggie tales phase yeah I know when I was 12 to 14 basically um, to be fair you did also teach Sunday school so I did um so I mean, I did that up until last year, basically. I had yeah. to stop because COVID happened. Um, so, uh, also, I was the last person to teach Sunday school before the church got shut down because of COVID, basically. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, hey, guys, are you worried about COVID or anything? Do you need anyone to talk to? And they're like, nah, we're fine. It should be good. And I was like, oh, okay. And then the church got <laughs> shut down the next week. <laughs> um yeah so that was fun that was that was good times uh so she basically ends up making a deal with the devil continuously and he just keeps on giving her more and more sin and it basically well, the first kind of like the first one's free an addiction allegory almost in some ways where she's just yeah. like i need more and he's like give me more money i mean that's stuff, that's you know? literally what btv temptation is because she's like daddy help me get this monkey off my back it's a mean monkey and he's like well we can't kill the monkey but we can try and make it more difficult for it to come back but it will never go away because that's how addiction works and i was like i was like yeah. wow that's that's like really real um and in the discussion questions for this episode, it did say to have an age-appropriate discussion about, like, addictive behaviors. <laughs> so. Um, and so then... Uh, the first hit's free, and like, then we'll just give you credit and credit and credit and credit. 
And then uh, she's like, oh, I have to get rid of him, but I don't know how. And then she chugs Jesus juice, and then she he dies or whatever. I don't know. I kind of lost melts. interest. She splashes it on him, and he melts yeah. like the Wicked Witch of the West. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And then the dad comes back, and he's just like, son sin whoa and i was like i am an idiot and then um and then wilson's just like just came back from our last commercial break and i'm like what commercial wilson <laughs> and then the um, commercial first the, no victoria here's what you didn't understand the whole thing was a commercial it was all product placement because the the superior organized nutrient or whatever is a real thing that wits end is selling now and then Wilson's like, and I did have the idea to make the joke where I start that sentence and then I end the recording, but that would be such a pain to, like, go back to. So Thank I'm not going to do that, that to you. Um, After what happened last time. Yeah, <laughs> that was funny. Um, I didn't think that would happen, but we we lived, experienced, and learned yes. from that. Um so yeah, Wilson's recording cuts out. Jason finishes the kind of moral bit of the lesson, and then his recording cuts out too. I think. What? And which then... by by which uh, Wilson is like? <clears throat> uh, you may be wondering if there's some sort of moral to the story, and the answer is no. There's not. Sometimes we just need a simple reminder. Okay, goodbye. Feed cut. I was like, um... all right. And uh, Chris comes in with a very tinny voice, but I've been listening to so much like Twitch mm -hmm. Discord stuff that I was just like, yeah, okay. You it was because of little... her recording quality? I didn't notice it. No, her, her recording quality was kind of, it wasn't like bad. It, you could just tell it wasn't. You could tell it was like huh, I didn't notice recorded. It. it sounded like a little bit low quality, uh -huh. just like. Not not low quality, but not like professional. Less than quality. perfect, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was just kind of jarring for me to hear Chris not sound like pristine, yeah. like factory water or something like that, or like clear spring water. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, that was the episode. Um, also, the vegetables sing at one point, and I didn't like it. And this fan art is bad the oh art. i'm looking at it right now oh the episode my art or eyes fan art? or not fan art the cover art ah. um it hurts my eyes they have little tuxedos on which i don't like that either they also have shoes i didn't when i, I heard the names in the episode like i didn't hear them as being veggie tail ripoffs but then i saw later it was written down as rob the potato and jerry the carrot yeah. and i was like okay well that's i that's pretty i didn't really notice that until you said them before there was just too much going on to process properly and as i've said a million times already i was very distracted while listening to this um so i don't like this picture I don't like anything about this picture. The, I'm going to exit. Okay. The video for this episode was an interesting ride because Bob was like, we're going to talk to someone who knows how to make something grow and keep it growing. So we're going to a turf farm, a good old grass turf People farm. People who don't like non <laughs> I, that's fair. I didn't. I didn't even think about <laughs> the homophones. 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 Since this is a Veggie Tales episode. Thank you, Victoria. You're um, welcome. We're at a turf farm. That's right. We're watching grass grow. Um, and I was like, okay. So when's the punchline? And Bob's like, well. We're going to learn about what it takes on the front end, what it takes on the back end, the marketing, what goes in grass growing and production. I'm like, okay, so like this is very clearly a bit because this is like a comically dry topic. He's going to be like, we're good. Today we're going to watch paint dry. Um, One of the biggest running jokes in the Green Eggs and Ham TV show yeah, is, is the, about watching grass grow. <laughs> and watching paint dry. And watching paint dry. And counting beans and pushing pencils. 
Yeah, I didn't know those were. Um, I didn't know counting beans was it's, a thing until it's you told a me. Very rarely heard phrase that I've heard compared to like pencil pushers. Yeah. Um, I remember you telling me about that after the show. Yeah. Hey y'all, Green Eggs and Ham is a really good show. Go watch it. It makes Sam I Am into a felon, and he makes you cry because he's an orphan. Like. That show really went hard. It was real good. I watched it twice, and it has a really good cast. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was like, this is a comically dry topic. This is very clearly a bit. It's going to be like it's some guy's going to start droning on, and then it's going to cut to like the actual thing that we're talking about. And then he starts like talking to the, the guy at this grass farm, and I was like, this is indeed dry enough of a discussion that I'm like, okay, this is hyperbolic. We're going to cut away to any second, and then it just doesn't. The whole thing is talking about grass. <laughs> and then we're like, we talk about different types of fertilizer and what nitrogen heavy, heavy fertilizer does for your grass versus phosphorus heavy ner- <laughs> fertilizer. And oh man, it's like being in science class all over again in grade and nine. That, that is actually the whole video documentary is oh. about grass. I've always wanted to learn more about grass. I was flabbergasted because it was like the way stuff was phrased. I was like, this is so obviously set up as a bit to cut away to something actually exciting. It was like the way it's being described is like purposefully dense and boring. And then that's what it actually was. And then Phil was. has a bonus bit on the episode. And he's just like, I've always really wanted to draw attention to how grass grows. <laughs> so I wrote an episode where we could talk about it. I needed to bring attention to a very important topic in today's society. Grass. I wonder when this one was filmed because, I mean... The previous documentary, well, two documentaries ago, I think, was the one where he was, like, digging in his backyard, and he was like, I have to be at home because of COVID, social social distancing and stuff, you know, so I'm doing some gardening. And then the last one, he was just in a kitchen by himself the whole time, um, and then they were using footage that was pre-filmed from the American Heritage Girls, so it was clear, like, okay, these are all things, you know, the, the love and war in the times of COVID, um, so it's all filmed in isolation and then this one he was like in an empty gym at first and being like oh, i'm lazy i'm at the gym so i can watch tv and use the weight bench to hold on my snack bowls uh but then he was doing the interview with the guy at the grass farm and it was only ever just the two of them and they weren't standing super close together but neither of them were wearing masks and i was like so what is this film before or after did they just I mean, do this really far in advance there might have been a disclaimer somewhere that you missed about missed pretesting. That said, like these people were tested or I mean, quarantined maybe ahead of it just seems like there would have been an easier way to do it i don't know um or maybe they just that was recorded like 10 years ago it was like we've always really wanted to do an episode about grass if there's one thing we know we're gonna be able to record right now and use it in the future this is going into the vault because we know that it could never not be pertinent to something we need to do our grass documentary it's just like list of things they want to talk about it's just like conclude buck's arc conclude jill's arc uh jill's arc introduce new characters um jason and jillian relationship question mark and then we cross up all out, these things and, we and then just like Boswell in huge letters grass. at the bottom just underlined a bunch of times and circle the only times is like grass <laughs> grass and conclude the boswell arc um yeah so, 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 I'm If they ever gonna... do another Boswell episode, it's going to be like when your pet dies and then they try and replace it uh-huh. and so you don't notice. All's not well with Boswell. <laughs> um, so, uh, the theme for this episode, if I take like what Wilson said at the end where he's like, there isn't a moral, sometimes you just need a simple reminder and the title of the episode, I tie that back to the body of this and then into the discussion questions where it's like, here's some other like simple reminders that we can lose sight of sometimes. So I think the idea is that the theme of this, ep- like the story and the moral of the story itself isn't the actual moral of the episode per se. Um, it's more that like this story is an extremely like generic, basic 
anecdote, you know, about like it Jesus, felt pretty Jesus and sin and stuff. Generic and basic to me. So that and the, because the point of it isn't the lesson of it, but the point of it is how sometimes we can get so busy and caught up in things that we forget, we lose sight of like the most basic aspects of things until they're reminded to us. Mm-hmm. Um, they they put in the discussion stuff this expression that I'd never heard of before that was like, for want of a nail, the horseshoe was lost. For want of a horseshoe, the horse was lost. For want of the horse, the rider was lost. For want of the rider, the battle was lost. For want of the rider, or for want of the battle, the kingdom was lost, all for the loss of a single horseshoe. Um, and this idea that like it's easy sometimes to uh, lose track of these simple core tenets of faith sometimes because we get caught up in all like these higher level things or in other things going on in life and then you can end up glossing over things because you you know you forget the basics and we've had other episodes that have addressed that in much better ways certainly before where it's like oh yeah like I just forgot this basic idea sometimes and it's like it's so obvious it just slips from your sight because it's so there all the time that you don't notice it um and I I lost a tenant once and then I got a Capaldi and then I left. I thought you were gonna say you lost a tenant because it was only being aired in theaters because Christopher Nolan doesn't understand COVID safety. Um I've heard that movie's good, but I've also heard it's bad. It I've depends on who I have. I've heard it's extremely confusing and has <laughs> the worst too. audio mixing in history. Mm-hmm. Um If there's one thing we can say about Tenant that I know, it is that it has bad audio mixing and you cannot hear the dialogue over the music. You can tell that from the trailer, though, honestly. I uh, I guess I have seen the trailer. Yeah, um, it was on YouTube a lot. What I was going to say. So I think that's supposed to be the way that the story blends with, like, the actual title of just, like, a simple reminder and the fact that Wilson's like, no, there's no moral to this. This is a bad Bible study. <laughs> um, sometimes Wilson just didn't realize he was recording. <laughs> sometimes I was thinking like the it. only excuse I can think of is just for the audio to keep cutting out is either they wanted to do a bit just like a joke, a running joke about like technical difficulties, which I get, or they um, his audio, the actor's audio actually did cut out in some of those places. No, I don't. So I, then they just added because of the timing Jason of it. No, I'm yeah. To like that would be funny if dots. that did actually happen, but I think they definitely. I was like, I will excuse you in this case, case because the joke's not funny. <laughs> I mean, it was funny the first time and probably the second time. Um, the third time, though. No. Yeah. And then Jason also cut out, and that was how the episode ended. And I was like, okay. Guys, I thought we Chris did. was gonna cut out mid credits. Uh huh. Just for the rule of I'm stories. sorry, whoever the last person in here is. Yeah, exactly. I thought it'd Rip be like, to your hard and work. I am Chris, and thank you for listening to Adventures and Not... And then, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if they'd done it like that, it would have been like... I don't know if it would have been funnier, per se, but I would have allowed it. It wouldn't have been anywhere... <laughs> I give Jason. you my permission, I give you my blessing... <laughs> It would have been better than Jason just also cutting out at the end of the episode. Yeah. I'll say that. It would have been funnier than that. Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose speaking as someone who hasn't had to do remote work or remote school like many other people I have, have um, I've had to do a lot less live streaming stuff. My live streaming stuff has basically just been church, and that's it. And meetings at work uh, have been like through Microsoft Teams and stuff. Um, audits. We've had to do remote audits, and those are fun. That's what my whole last week was. Um, yeah, so I haven't had as much uh, running into the technical difficulty side of things as a lot of other people have for school or work, so I can't speak as much to just how pressing of an issue it's been dealing with people who previously did not know how to use live streaming technology correctly in this current epoch. 
I will um, say I was watching um, Dream SMP the other day, and there was like a chess thing, and two of the members had to go on Zoom, and they'd never been on Zoom before, which was really weird because one of them is seventeen and still in school, um, and both of them well, there are didn't other programs out there didn't that know how to... to like join the Zoom meeting properly or go to a different like Zoom room and couldn't figure it out, and then one of them while trying to leave uh, one bit of Zoom almost, or like minimize the window, like didn't know how to minimize the window, uh, even though it was Fundy, who was a programmer. Uh, and then he almost left the Zoom call right after it started. Dare I say an incredibly proficient he, programmer. Yeah, because he couldn't figure out how to like minimize the window and he almost hit the leave button instead after like spending 20 minutes trying to get into the tournament and I was just in pain watching it. But yeah, yeah. I thought it was really funny that of all people it was like the programmer that was having... Yeah, it's fair. I mean, sometimes funny. sometimes it's not your fault. Sometimes it's just the internet no, I mean, like, go out. Yeah, Zoom... Zoom can be hard to figure out. Yeah, um, sometimes your platform I... messes up. Sometimes your internet messes up. And like they said, the first this was I think it said the second remotely recorded episode that they made. Mm -hmm. um, and they talked about last time, and I talked about like the recording session they did the first time remotely, where like someone hit technical difficulties, and they're like, "We are halfway through this session, and we are only like four percent of the way through the amount that we need to do." I will say Zoom and other online things are very hard to figure out like your first time using them um i remember like mom did zoom a lot so i had her show me how to do it and then i applied for a job somewhere where one of the requirements was you know how to use zoom and it was the first time i've really lied on a resume before and i was like yes i do because i hadn't really had to use it for anything yet and then um I had to use it for the job, so then I went back to mom, and I was like, okay, I need you to show me again, because I got the job, and I need to know what I'm doing. And, yeah, and then it went fine without a hitch. Um, yeah. I'm going to give this episode... Oh, is that too generous? I feel like a whatever one, you give it is going to be too generous. A one out of five. Okay, one, I'm going to give it a one, one out of five. five, too. One out of ten, But I will sorry. say, for the life of me, what, what I don't know what the one is. I, I can't really think of any The positive. one is the applicable fact that COVID is mentioned in the show. I guess. That's the only thing I can think of. Um, the fact that Wilson at least acknowledged that they were making VeggieTales references explicitly in the show. I I like the fact that you didn't realize the whole commercial break thing, and I did. I like the fact I, that they I started, say, and you were like, I think they might have been referencing Veggie Tales, but I'm not certain. Okay, I was like 98% certain, but I wanted to just say, like, leave a couple, like, mentions of doubt just in case uh -huh. I was wrong or something. I didn't think I was. But, you also didn't figure the S O N S yeah. I N thing too, so I you know, I did. We're, we're both before the episode we was done. Both, none of us are free of sin, Victoria. We're both idiots. How about that? <laughs> we're both dummies. Okay. Um, was that also your rating? Yeah, it was. Okay. Um, that's why I was like, I don't know if this is too generous. Twenty no, percent. I I feel like. One out of five isn't very generous, but at the same time, I feel like one out of five is almost too generous for this episode. Um, I don't want to give it lower than that, though. So. Okay, so what are we talking about next time, Victoria? Uh, the last two episodes of Album 70. Yes, and then I'll be doing our conclusions for that as well. Yes. Time to wrap and it all I, up. I'm excited to... Yes hear the last couple episodes of album 70 i'm excited to hear the last episode i have heard the second last yes it comes out uh le demain so i thought it, they came out on wednesday they have been coming out on tuesdays they normally okay. historically are cool. thursdays get to listen to it soon does it come out like midday or is i it assume like... it's midnight i have no idea okay. i don't know what time well, zone it's midnight i, get, I might assume I guess I get to listen to it that it's central whenever time. it drops so that's exciting. Um, anyway, I will 
Uh, I was going to say, I will let you go and then hang up, but we're yeah, still recording. we're still recording, so. <laughs> so that's what we're doing next time. Until then, thank yeah. you for joining us on our side of the YouTube. I've been Devin Francis, also known as Dr. Blackard. And I will let you go. <laughs> okay, uh, this has been the Adventures in Osceola cast. <laughs> Goodbye, Victoria. Goodbye, Devin. <laughs>